Welcome back to Astral Self Care, Sunday Self Care, where we talk about the different sun signs, moon signs, Leo signs, the different zodiac signs, <laughs> and how you can use self care if the featured zodiac sign is one that is in your sun, moon, or rising. So we this week are on Virgo. All right. So this is the deal. Let me get my mic together here. It's all far away from me. Virgo, I think. I think Virgo, I think Gemini. And a lot of signs. Every sign has its thing. But I think Virgo may be one of the tougher ones. I just, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Okay. And the reason I say that is you're going to find out minute when I say these traits. And so before we get all into it, because this is a juicy one, all right, because I think Virgos are very misunderstood. Um, and because of these traits that they have, and because we are on a soul, we're a soul having a human experience, which means we're going to have things that can be very discombobulating for the Virgo energy. Um, that's why I say it can be challenging if it's your sun, moon or rising. Okay. And why people maybe get a, a, get a, they get a hard or a bad rap. But before we do that, I'm Kenya. I don't even think I introduced myself. If you're new to this space, welcome, welcome. Make sure you are subscribing more than anything. Make sure you're liking and commenting, sharing your thoughts and sharing, okay. Sharing this video. Um, and that's mainly because the way that we get into the algorithm so that other people will find us and so that other people will tune in to all that we have to offer on these Sunday astral self cares, um, then, you know, you got to share it and you got to do all the things. So my Wi-Fi looks like it's doing some funky things. So I'm sorry if the image is coming out kind of blurry or delayed or whatever, but I can't control it. I'm doing the best I can. Um, if you're a regular, if you've been tuning each week, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you are a subscriber to our finding your voice email, then you will automatically, um, and you, well, no, let me, let me, let me change that. If you want this to land into your email box, what I do is all those who subscribe to Finding Your Voice or if you're a Patreon member, um, you automatically get this video put into your email box each week so you don't have to go search it. But if you are like, oh, I want that, plus some other tidbits, join the mailing list. Um, you can also go to finding your vo or info at findingyourvoiceafter40.com and just request, can I get on there? Can I get on there, please, for the, I want this delivered straight. Okay. So that's that. Um, so yes, if you are new though, please make sure you subscribe and like, all right, so let's get into Virgo. And I try very hard to keep these videos no more than 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. So again, I apologize if the Wi-Fi, if the video is doing glitchy things, because on my end, it's indicating that it may be doing that. So, <laughs> but we're going to keep going anyway. So Virgo. So I will say this, I do not have, um, Virgo in my sun, moon, or rising, and in my chart where Virgo sits in my chart, I actually do not have any planets. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean that I don't have no Virgo stuff because we all got Virgo in us. Okay. We all have it in us. Um, but I don't have any planets that really activate it um, or trigger it in a way. Um, but I, as a Scorpio sun, as a Cancer rising, um, you know, Virgo is earth, Scorpio, cancer is water, water and earth creates kind of a mud, which is a nurturing effect. And so with that kind of nurture effect, um, I think Scorpio, Virgo, cancer, Virgo, there tends to be some, some nice kind of connection there, but even still, depending on the relationship, Again, I think Virgo energy, those of you who have um, strong Virgo placements or in your top three, definitely tune into this. And those who have connections or relationships with those who have Virgo as sun, moon, rising, listen to this so you can better understand their language, better understand their wiring. Um, I think once you understand the Virgo wiring, then there's a lot more, you know, like anything, more grace, and you'll, and you'll just be able to interpret things a little bit better. So 
let's get into it. Let's let me put my notes because y'all know I put my notes. I don't try to be memorizing all this stuff. Okay. So Virgo, it doesn't have you like, you know, I had said Leo is the, you know, I will and, you know, um, Aries is the I am. Well, Virgo doesn't have the I thing, but it does have um, this idea of conformity. Okay. Conformity is a big kind of mantra for them and ideals of perfection. Okay. This is really important that you hear those two words, conformity to constructs and ideals of perfection. Well, already when we're talking about perfection and conformity, that already can have some challenging aspects when we're wanting to be, um, in our most individual flawful self, right? And this human experience is going to have these bumps and intrusions and these ups and these downs. And I do think that Virgo, because it wants to create that, um, that ideal and right thing, it can be challenging. Now, this is the thing, we all have Virgo in us, right? So this is an energy that we all do need in this experience. We want to utilize this, this idealistic and this organized and this um, per precise energy because that's how we get things done. That's how we meet goals. That's how we achieve. Okay. So I wanted just to, to state that disclaimer. So you really understand while that may seem kind of like, whoa, well, nobody's perfect and you shouldn't conform. It's not that it's not the totality of the sign, but, but it is the, it is the, the essential element. It's the essential energy of uh, Virgo. Okay. The dates for Virgo are August 23rd through September 22nd. Um, the symbol is the Virgin. And if you, there's a lot of symbol, um, symbology in astrology. Um, I don't want to get all into that today, but I will say with, when you look at the symbol for Virgo, it also, it has kind of the Jesus fish leg in it. And what do we say about, you know, Jesus and Mary Virgin? And it is, it is, it's, it's all very connected. This is why when people are very like, well, you know, that goes against, you know, the Bible or Christianity. No, they're all so in sync. So Virgo um, really does, its symbol is the virgin, okay, and maiden. The element is earth, so therefore it has that feminine energy. It is a mutable modality. So again, if it's mutable, mutable means it's wanting to disperse. Um, information and skills. It wants to give out. It wants to be of service. And that's the other thing about Virgo. Virgo is not that it's expecting everybody else to be perfect, but they're expecting themselves, okay, so that they can make sure they're giving the right information so they can be of appropriate and good service, okay? Um, the ruling planet is Mercury. Um, it's connected with the sixth house in the birth chart, and it's opposite of Pisces, okay? Very opposite energy. And so when you look in the chart, and again, if you are like, I don't know my chart, please reach out. Let's do a session so that you can see your chart. I don't, I, tre I, I do ABCs version, okay? So that you can really understand it. And I guide people through, I do guidance sessions. So I help people when you're on your own and you're having a situation, you want to better understand why you're making decisions or even why your tendencies go one way or the other. When you look at the chart, it's very clear. It's very clear when you start studying and learning it. And so Pisces is, is complete opposite energy of Virgo, of that conformity. No, Pisces is water. It's, you know, every which way with water is kind of boundaryless even. So um, the idea of that opposition, you know, Virgos can pull from wherever their Pisces is in their chart to kind of help with this kind of, you know, perfectionist type of energy that it tends to be wired for. Um, tap more into your water energy, those things that have a little less um, uh, structure to it can be helpful. Um, I think it's, it's almost too, um, for air, <laughs> air signs um, are so expansive um, that sometimes I think can be a bit jarring for a Virgo energy to feel a sense of balance. But yeah, that's, that's, there's a lot. Okay. So I, I want to stay on script, but there's a lot. I've, I think it's important to really point this out because Virgo energy is very necessary at the same times because Virgo rules health and it's associated with health and our health, our mental, our physical, 
is, is so primary. So our Virgo energy, we have to really be careful of how we're thinking and how we're moving emotionally, particularly those with Virgo in their top three, because it can show up in their health a bit more readily just because of the wiring. Okay. And it goes a lot deeper than that. And I'm, I'm not going to have time to be able to go into all of what that is. It doesn't mean that Virgos are unhealthy. In fact, Virgos tend to be over, over occupied with the health because of wanting it to be right, wanting it to be perfect, wanting, um, not to, to, to not to have problems or flaws and our health, um, not to say that, you know, it's, it's bound to have problems because that's not true either, but we do have to create rest and create space for letting go. And, um, so that the body can, can, can do a lot of its work on its own, as opposed to think, 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 think it through, which Virgo has a tendency and earth energy tends to be a little bit more in the thinking detached from the emotion and more into the thinking, more into the mind as opposed to the heart space. And so, Virgo getting more in their heart space can alleviate some of that. Okay. So let's talk about the high frequency. Okay. So the things that are just awesome about Virgo and about our hour, because all of us have Virgo in us, our Virgo energy are these, this is what we aspire to have when it's balanced, when it's in good sync, um, the high frequency, uh, um, and those of you who are first, who are just watching, I didn't describe this and I usually do, but what we do is I go through these traits and then I talk about high frequency versus low frequency. So high frequency, meaning those most productive aspects of that sign, low frequency is just meaning the more unproductive or stagnant energy or the energy that can create challenges or problems, um, given that, that Zodiac sign. And then I go through the actual self-care methods. Okay. So the high of the high frequency of Virgo is it's desire to meet expectations and standards. And so some may say, oh, that's not a high, but it is to a degree of, again, we need, listen, as a musician, I have a few Virgos as producers and I love having a Virgo as a producer, as a music producer. Why? Because their, their standards, they're going to meet the expectations. They're going to work really, really hard to make sure that things are as correct and as on point as possible. And so for me, you know, that's benefits, right? That benefits working and, and working with Virgos period. Um, you know, the work environment is geared very much towards meeting expectations and standards. So they tend to do well in those spaces of work. Whether emotionally they feel that way, who knows? But the mental of it, yeah, they're there. Um, there is usually a need to be productive and busy because of the mind, the Virgo being associated with Mercury, which rules our mind um, and communication. So that idea of being in that productive lens, um, being in that busy lens, again, um, activates this, uh, journey of wanting to meet expectations and then wanting to be useful. Okay. Not wanting to just be considered just sitting around and not being of service. So by being busy can, doesn't always can mean being more productive and useful. Um, and you know, Virgo wants to feel as though things are under control again. And, and that can be in the high frequency, that's wonderful because then they're going to organize things in a way that's efficient and that's going to allow for there to be a sense of stability. Because remember, it's earth and earth is always a stabilizing energy if that is the element. So um, that that whole ability to, to get things under control can be really positive. The problem is you don't want it to get in the low frequency, which can be controlling right? Because of trying to get things balanced, right? Um, Virgo, because it wants to meet and conform, it can be a very accommodating and adaptable energy. But at the same time, it's looking for accuracy, okay? It's an analytical energy. It's a careful energy, a cautious energy, very hardworking, um, helpful, um, and again, those, those high standards, okay? So these are the positive. There's even more than that. And again, contact me, go to the description, book a time so that we can sit down and look at your birth chart and talk about it more. Because I think that, like I said, Virgo energy is one that if not balanced, it can go into some very more, I don't want to say neurotic, but it can go into those types of tendencies because it will start to kind of, it, it will want everything to be right. It's 
kind of like um, analysis, paralysis by analysis. Okay. So now I'm kind of paralyzed. I can't really do because I'm so caught up in analyzing to making sure that it's meeting very high expectations. And, you know, that can be very frustrating when, you know, we live in a world that just doesn't always accommodate that energy, right? It works great when um, certain things are in place. Awesome. But everything's not going to always be in place. And then what happens to Virgo energy, those who have it, they will start to get very critical on self and then judgy on self. So let's, speaking of these kind of lower frequency, let's talk about, so this is what Virgo energy has to be very careful of is becoming way too codependent on other people's opinions and others' thoughts. Okay. Which then sends into a cycle of complaining. Okay. So now I'm in this perpetual state of complaining, perpetual set of being very concerned, can even be condemning um, to a, you know, because of its reliance on, on others affirming or looking, I'm right, right? I'm, I, I appear well, right? I appear good, or I feel like I've done the right thing. Um, and so when that's not all the way right, then, you know, obviously that can be very, well, well, some other energies, when Virgo is not in your type three, is that, you know, we all want certain things to be right to a certain extent, right? But Virgo, that can be very discombobulating. Their sense of balance is having the accuracy. Their sense of steadiness is having the, um, the analytical and the cautiousness. That is how they feel they're most stable. That organization piece, that perfecting piece is how they get their balance. That's how they feel stable in that, okay? Um, and so again, in a low frequency, if things are kind of out of whack or you can't always create that, they're, to get that sense of control, they may go more into being more emotionally controlling, okay? Um, can be very critical, especially upon self. Okay. Um, can be critical in other situations too, and can give unwanted opinions that nobody else really wants to hear um, <laughs> necessarily, but because the Virgo is trying to make it correct and how they see it, they, that lower frequency that can come out that way. So you have to be careful of that. Can be even high strung as a result, again, that, that busyness, that always wanting to be productive. Um, and this is kind of the last thing I'll kind of say with the low frequency Virgo has to be careful to not have these, not only high expectations, but impossible expectations, impossible standards. So now we're working so hard, so hard on things that are not even really possible. Okay. And I'm not saying that all, I, I, I cause I want to be careful cause I don't want Virgo energy to feel like, you know, there's a lot of criticism because then that goes back to the criticism, right? The thing that other people's opinions, it's not that again, we all have it. We all have it in us. And so what Virgo is asking of us is to want to be of service and to be of service in a way that is cautious, careful, compassionate, and caring. Okay. And that is useful. Okay. The thing, and so that makes Virgo a really beautiful energy because they, they will achieve, they will get it done because they work hard to, to be productive. Okay. The issue is when life does what life is going to naturally do, what is meant to do, when those contrasts come that are meant to come, how do you accommodate that? And that, that's, that's where now we'll go into the self-care so that you can level out that criticality, so you can level out the not being overly opinionated or overly judgmental on self. Let's do more of the self-care so that we can kind of balance that energy out and so that we're using the Virgo for its highest purpose, okay? And that's those high frequency things. So let's go into the self-care for Virgo. So what are some things we can do? So remember, Virgo, because of their practicality and attention to detail and desire for order, it becomes really important for Virgo energy to focus on activities that kind of promote relaxation, but still give a hint of organization, like organizing for a Virgo energy, heaven. Okay. Decluttering the house. Awesome. That's awesome. Self-care. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's very productive, but it's also very relaxing <clears throat> for Virgo energy. So organizing the space. I find that if you have Virgo in your top three, you should 
you, how do I want to say this? <clears throat> this is a necessary part of your self-care. Um, you have to be careful to balance that um, and, and do it in a way, but most Virgos can handle that, you know, very well. You don't want to get where you're just obsessive over it. Right. But that just having like, you know, every Saturday or weekend to have the time to declutter and organize, organize various living spaces or cl closets or the way you do your laundry, all that, that's actually very self-care because there's a sense of calm that's happening while doing that, because now we have the order. And again, if the Virgo energy has the order, it's going to feel that's, that's a sense of care for the Virgo energy. Um, that goes along with to-do list and planning. That's very helpful for the Virgo energy um, to keep it in its stable. So things that are within its own control, so it doesn't have to impose manipulative or emotionally controlling factors onto other people. Um, to get to get in a space of not getting overboard and not becoming obsessive, it's important that there is um, time for mindfulness and mindful breathing and relaxation um, for the self-care of Virgo. Um, healthy eating, absolutely. Because again, Virgo rules, you know, astrology, there's medical astrology. And so every sign rules different bodies, parts of our body. Well, Virgo, it rules like health overall. Okay. So most Virgos there in who, who have Virgo in their top three, there's a, a, a strong conscientiousness <laughs> around health. So healthy eating um, can be a really wonderful space for self-care for Virgos. Um, paying attention to it, make, preparing it, making sure it's balanced. Um, it just contributes to the overall well-being. Um, being self-reflective, setting time, setting setting aside time to be reflective, journaling. It can help you process the thoughts and get to the emotion because Virgo Virgo has to be careful to make sure that it's actually getting to the to the truth of the emotion and not the trigger of the emotion, not just the the outer the symptom per se, but get to what what is this really about? Like what what is the foundation of what's causing maybe some breakdown in a certain area? Okay, um, reading and learning, reading and learning, reading and learning, reading and learning is very very productive and good for the self care of a Virgo. Um, it allows you to stimulate the mind. Um, you're getting knowledge. You're expanding your skill set, and it's still to yourself, and it's still calming, right? Um, yoga, gentle exercise, again, that's going to be kind of for everybody. But again, this um, health factor that's such a big deal for Virgo, that helps with that. And it helps to relax so that, again, you don't get too much into the hyper side of organization or the more obsessive side of it all. Um, nature walks, um, again, that earth, Virgo is an earth sign. So being out in the earth, um, recharging um, in the outdoors and its calming effects is really, really helpful for Virgo energy, um, pampering self, um, and setting boundaries and, you know, setting boundaries, all of these are for everybody, but I want to, I want to show you why it's particularly good for each, whatever zodiac sign we're talking about. So for Virgo, by setting that boundaries, again, anything that's going to allow us not to get too controlling, too obsessed with organizing things, too perfect perfectionisty, anything that's going to create some like, okay, yes, let's shoot for accuracy and be analytical and organized. That's what the Virgo, that's how the Virgo thinks. And it should be, that's what's going to allow them to feel their healthiest self, which is then going to promote the best life. Right. But there has to be some boundaries so that it doesn't go too far on one end. Okay. Um, being able to express gratitude is also because that's that, again, that sense of service and being useful, um, and the positive aspects, um, and you know, of it all keeps the Virgo in its higher frequency. I think that Virgo energy, you know, people have to remember Virgos have the ability to have some really beautiful artistic, um, artistic outcomes. So artistic pursuits can be really therapeutic and it can also really put the mind to action in a different kind of way. Okay. So the only thing that I think, you know, I, I know a lot of Virgos who are artists and you, the only thing you just have to be careful of is not to just, you know, only publish those things that are just right. You know what I mean? Or only show those things or only complete those things that are just right. You got to make sure you give some, some, some leeway in it all. Um, 
And digital detox, and I'm, you know, that's for everybody, but digital detox reduces kind of the mental clutter. And um, that mental clutter for Virgo, again, can get really cluttery because there's this need to have things in order. So having a cluttered intake of information can be detrimental. So detoxing from that is very helpful. So those are all our Virgo things. There was a lot for Virgo. There is a lot. And I honestly could go on and on because I, 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 I tend to um, gravitate, you know, my Virgo sits in communication and mindset. So I, you know, can be really detail oriented in my emails and how I make sure people understand, particularly those closest to me. Um, so, you know, and, and I've had so many connections with Virgo energy, those who close, some of my closest relationships, some of my closest people in my life have had Virgo in their top three. And so I really admire Virgo and have, and, and love and are, are so passionate of, about Virgo because it doesn't equal, I think sometimes people then think, well, if you're that perfectionist then you may, you know, it may be hard to be around you. It's like, no, I, I, you know, I think Virgos, you know, want to be of service. They want to be connected that way. And so it can be a really beautiful and pleasant energy. So, all right, before we take off here, let's do our question of the week. Um, oh, did we not put it? I don't think I put it down here. All right. So let me, let me give this to y'all. Let me give it to y'all. We, I want to talk about a retrograde and I need to make sure my question is here. I wanted to talk about, oh, I didn't talk about it. Pluto retrograde. What does Pluto retrograde mean? All right. So I probably shouldn't have picked Pluto because Pluto is a hard retrograde, but I picked it because we're just getting out of a Pluto retrograde and we were in Pluto retrograde when, you know, uh, COVID hit all, oh, oh Lord. So Pluto is the most powerful planet, but it works heavily in the subconscious and without going heavy into it, because that's a whole nother discussion and it deserves its own discussion. I just want to read this to you as it regards to what a Pluto retrograde. Remember retrogrades are when the planets, they're not literally going backwards, but they're slowing down so much that visually it appears as though they are. Um, but really what happens is in terms of the zodiac sign, it will it will kind of stay and move into a, a zodiac sign um, behind it as opposed to going forward to the next. Okay. So Pluto's retrograde, what it does, I'm going to read this to you. It can facilitate a process of transformation, urging us to confront hidden truths and embrace personal growth and empowerment. Now, if there isn't a better way to describe what we've been going through um, the past several years, um, certain things coming out, certain truths coming out, all of us, I don't think anybody has gone through the past three years without significant changes, significant transformation, significant loss, significant gains. Um, and it's urging us to confront hidden truths, those truths that we're not really aware of, those things that subconsciously sit, if we want to call shadow, whatever, yes, these things we're not fully aware of, aware of but other people may experience from us. Um, and also those truths that are the truth of who we are. It wants us to get to that so that we can be truly empowered so that we can truly grow. And this is why I say that Pluto needs its own, we need its own self-care Sunday <laughs> because it's very deep. And what makes it so deep is it's a more subconscious energy. And it's a long-term energy. Pluto is the furthest away. It moves. It's Therefore, it's, it, it, it's going to take the longest to kind of go through everything and to, to move you know, around um, the zodiac signs. So it, it is patient. It takes its time because transformation takes time. It's not something that's quick, but it's an urgent situation. So when it hits, when it's felt, it can be felt very strong. Okay. So Pluto just went direct. Okay. So it's trying to move, but wherever Pluto goes, <laughs> 
wherever Pluto goes. And right now it's on its way to Aquarius. It went direct. It's, it, was, it was living in Capricorn. So Capricorn is structures, rules, government. Pluto's just been sitting, just been sitting there doing some very interesting things. And so now it's moving back forward and going to be hitting Aquarius, which is going to be even more significant. And it already has started. So, um, so Pluto is an important planet and, you know, um, we'll talk more about it, um, how we can take care of ourselves. Because again, this is astro self-care. But if you want to see how Pluto, and Pluto is generational. So, you know, if you are of a certain age group, you're going to have the same Pluto. Um, I'm in a generation, um, few, well, Gen X, not all of Gen X is Libra, is Pluto and Libra, but a lot of us. And we're being asked to transform relationships. How about that? That's a whole nother conversation. I know I keep saying that, right? But if you want to learn about, okay, well, my Pluto's in Libra, so what does that mean? Or my Pluto's in Virgo, what does that mean? Pluto in Virgo ain't no joke. Okay? So definitely, it, it means a lot, and it can be really transformational. I mean, really, really transformational, but it can be also a very heavy energy. So, um, you know, reach out and we can do a session. I can show you a little bit more and how that may be impacting more personally for you and the things that you can do. So, so that's what we got next week. We will be in the room with Libra. Libra is going to lighten us up a bit. Libra is a very different energy than Virgo. Um, and, Libra, I have a lot of Libra placements. So I'm very familiar with Libra. And Libra can is this pleasant energy, but it can so easily get into the people please. And so we're going to break that all down. This people pleasing of Libra energy. Oh, <sighs> how do we help the Libra not do that? Well, there are ways we get into the self-care of the Libra. Okay. So thank you all again. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell. So whenever these videos come on, you got notification or get on our email list. And just, um, if you go to finding your voice after 40.com, you can get on, or also just email me info at finding your voice after 40.com because not everybody on my email list gets the astrology stuff. Only those who have expressed interest in astrology. So make sure, you know, if you know, you want to get on that email list and specifically for the astro self-care, I would say email info at findingyourvoiceafter40.com and we'll get you on there. Okay. All right. You guys have a minute. We went over our time, but Virgo had a lot. It was a lot. We'll be back next week. All right. You guys take care. Bye.